This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More about them later in the video. The 2021 season is over, and what a season it was, with a brand new race winner, a title battle that went down to the last lap of the year, and even a McLaren victory for the first time in almost a decade. But which drivers have done the best? Let's have a look. My name's Andy, and this is Behind the Drive. In this video, I will rank the drivers from worst to best for their 2021 season performance. I'll also let you know whether they've moved up or down in the list since the mid-season rankings I pulled together during the summer break. This one could get feisty in the comments, but this is my opinion, so you might not agree, but just make sure to be nice about it in the comment section. Oh, and I haven't included Robert Kubica in this list, as he only did two races this year. Number 20, Nikita Mazepin, non-mover. First up is a non-mover from the mid-season ranking. Nikita Mazepin, in my opinion, has been the worst performer of the season. He's been in the worst car, but even so, he's been a way off his teammate Mick Schumacher. The qualifying gap between them has been almost a second all year, which is massive when competing in the same machinery. His best finish this season was a 14th place in Azerbaijan, and in the second half of the season he failed to finish higher than 17th. And yes, he's had some bad luck across the year at times, but really, it's been a tough first year in the sport for Nikita Mazepin. He's improved over his 21 races in my view, but he's not had that standout result that has announced his arrival in Formula 1. Number 19, Mick Schumacher, non-mover. It was a really tricky decision to make for the driver that sits 19th on my list. There are a number of drivers that have improved in the second half of the season and shown glimpses of brilliance. For me though, I've got Mick Schumacher at number 19. I can't stress enough, Schumacher could have easily beaten number 18, 17 or maybe even 16 on this list, but it's not quite worked out over the course of the full year for the German driver. Schumacher has had an average rookie season, comprehensively beating his teammate but still driving a car that was unable to compete with any others on the grid this year. He reached Q2 twice in France and Turkey but was never able to fully capitalise on any chaotic races to score points with the best finish of 12th which came in Hungary. Overall, I think Schumacher is gaining a lot of respect from other drivers and based on his historic form rising through the feeder categories, he's always been better in his second year in a category. So watch this space for 2022 and Mick Schumacher's performance. Number 18, Antonio Giovinazzi, down four. Antonio Giovinazzi next and he drops four positions from his mid-year ranking of 14th and it's been so frustrating to watch Gio in the latter stages of this season. He's had a car which is almost certainly better than the Williams and yet he sits behind both Williams drivers in the standings. But he could have easily been so much higher. His performances in qualifying have been incredibly impressive with four Q3 appearances over the year. That qualifying in Monza to get to 10th, to then start the race 7th after the sprint qualifying and penalties was so impressive, and one of his standout performances, but he got too eager to compete with the cars that his Alfa Romeo simply wasn't as quick as, and that resulted in him missing turn 5, a lap 1 collision with Carlos Sainz, and a spin down to the back of the order. It feels like this was the nearly season for Giovinazzi. He could have so easily had an exceptional year, but in the end, it's been just three points and a way behind his teammate, despite the fact that Raikkonen missed two races. The Italian driver is off to Formula E, racing for the Dragon Penske team, and I expect he'll do well there because he does indeed have the talent, but it just hasn't worked out for him in Formula 1. Number 17, Nicholas Latifi, down 2. Nicholas Latifi is in 17th for me, which means he's two positions down on his mid-year performance. And perhaps that mid-year ranking of 15th was influenced by his recent result in Hungary at the time. However, the Canadian driver's only point from the second half of the season was a single point for finishing 9th in Belgium. And really, he lucked into that, with Stroll and Bottas both receiving grid penalties to then move up further after Sergio Perez's reconnaissance lap crash. Sure, he had to do well to put his Williams car 12th after qualifying, but that day was far more about driver skill, and his teammate put that same car second on the grid. Another highlight for Latifi was out-qualifying George Russell for the first time in a conventional qualifying session, achieving this feat at the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, and then of course repeating that feat in Abu Dhabi. But once again, these are small highlights relative to the achievements and performances of his teammate over the course of this year. Overall, Latifi has certainly had an improved second season, but will need to up his game to prove himself against Alex Albon next year. Number 16, Yuki Tsunoda, up two. 
Yuki Tsunoda next and he's up two positions on this list in 16th position. The second half of the season has been a significant improvement on the first. He's certainly having fewer crashes and is starting to prove himself in the races and qualifying sessions. The Japanese rookie has had a tough start to life in Formula 1 and competing with Pierre Gasly, who seems to be at home in that car and with that team. It's no easy feat. But there have been moments in the second half of this year, such as the race in Turkey, where he did such an excellent job at holding the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton behind for a few laps, making the British driver's life incredibly difficult as he tried to work his way up the order following his engine penalty. Of course, later in that race he did make a mistake as he used too much tyre in the defence against Hamilton and he ultimately dropped further down the order after a spin. Likewise in the USA, he did achieve points with 10th in qualifying and 9th at the finish and it was a good result for him and the team. And then of course, Sonoda saved his best till last with a 4th place finish in Abu Dhabi which didn't quite get him past Lance Stroll in the driver's standings but I'm sure it's improved his confidence going into 2022. There could have been so many more opportunities for Sonoda in the second half of the season, and yes he didn't capitalise on them, but he's certainly improving and this new era of Formula 1 could help him take another step. So that's the first 5 drivers covered, I now want to take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all in one platform which allows you to build your online presence and run your business, and with a Squarespace website you can connect with your audience. You can create member only areas which allows you to create specific content for certain customers, helping you to generate more revenue whilst also allowing you to gain the insights you need about your audience. Squarespace is incredibly easy to use and their platform is so intuitive to ensure you can get up and running with your website as soon as possible. And you can go to squarespace.com to get a free trial and then when you're ready to launch make sure you go to squarespace.com forward slash behind the drive for 10% off your first website or domain. The link is in the description so make sure you head over to Squarespace to see what you can create. Number 15 Lance Stroll down 2 Lance Stroll next and he's down 2 positions from his mid-year ranking. The Canadian driver on his day is one of the best and he's proven that in the wet conditions he can be an excellent driver. However, his performances fluctuate so much over the course of the season. This wouldn't have been helped by the fact that his Aston Martin car was definitely not an easy one to drive over the course of the year, but regardless, he's very frustrating to watch when he could be so much better. Some highlights from his season include his 6th place finish in Qatar after he did well to make the one stop strategy work, protecting those tyres in the latter stages. He also had a good run to 7th in Italy, but overall, this season has been a tough one for Lance as he had a difficult car to drive. He'll be hoping that the increase in funding and growth within the Aston Martin team will mean he's in a better position for next season. Number 14, Daniel Ricciardo, up 2. Ricciardo up next and he's up 2 positions from his mid-year ranking, but still ranks fairly low on this list which shows that this season has not been his finest. The obvious highlight for the Australian driver was that unbelievable race win at Monza where he took the McLaren to third in the sprint race and then went and got the race win and the fastest lap to take a haul of 27 points across that weekend. It was an impressive result and one that showed that he had taken the chance over the summer to reset and establish how he could improve with the challenging McLaren car. But Ricardo still struggled compared to his teammate at so many races across the rest of the year and he's been comprehensively beaten by Lando Norris across the season. Both McLaren drivers seem to have struggled in the second half but Ricardo in particular failed to improve his consistency in the latter stages of the year. On the whole, Ricardo has commented that he's learned a lot about himself in 2021 with the driver being forced to analyse his driving style more than ever before and identify the areas that he could improve on having been given a new challenge in that McLaren car. Let's hope he finds a way to improve going into next season where his feedback will have helped the team to design a car that should, in theory, be more suited to his driving style. But we shall have to wait and see on that one. Number 13, Kimi Raikkonen, up 4. Kimi Raikkonen takes 13th on my list and he's up 4 places on his mid-year ranking. And the reason for that is that he's proven that he's still got it despite racing in an Alfa Romeo car that's far from the best on track. Despite contracting Covid and missing a couple of races, he's done well in the last few races of his Formula 1 career, with a couple of 8th place finishes in Russia and Mexico. As a result of those, he's comprehensively beaten Giovinazzi over the course of the year, with 10 points to Giovinazzi's 3. 
and for me, despite being in his 40s, he could have easily stayed in the sport. It's a shame to see Raikkonen leave. He's an incredible talent and he's definitely controlled his own career, with a break halfway through it to compete in rallying in NASCAR. But after 349 races, 103 podiums, 21 race wins, and of course, one world championship, I think we'll all miss Kimi. Number 12, Sebastian Vettel, down one. Vettel next, and he's down one position on his mid-year ranking. The first half of the year was definitely stronger for Vettel, as he had that exceptional race in Azerbaijan and a brilliant performance in Hungary, which was cruelly taken away from him after he failed to save enough fuel to provide a sample to the FIA. The second half of the year has been much tougher for the German champion, but he's done well to keep himself in the mix and score points on seven occasions. I think the Aston Martin team must have switched more of their resources to next season, as they definitely dropped off the pace towards the end of the year. Perhaps they were also disadvantaged by the aging Mercedes internal combustion engine, which the manufacturer admitted definitely lost out as the mileage increased. Vettel has stuck around for next season, but I would not be surprised if that was his last year in the sport, especially if Aston Martin don't do something to prove that they can compete in the not too distant future. Number 11, Esteban Ocon, down one. Ocon is down one position on my list to go 11th, and the highlight of his season is undoubtedly that impressive win in Hungary, where he went on the right tyre at the right time to control the race from the front and defend from Sebastian Vettel. Ocon also did well in Saudi Arabia, as he was just beaten across the finish line by Valtteri Bottas in the fight for third position, but regardless, it was another excellent performance from the Frenchman. Overall, Ocon ended the season just seven points behind his teammate Fernando Alonso, and sure, he has had more experience driving that car, but I think most people put Ocon a lot further behind Alonso this year, so it's a great result for him this season. He drops down on this list, but that's mostly off the back of other drivers performing better in the second half of the year and moving up on this list. Number 10, Fernando Alonso, down three. Fernando Alonso has proven a lot of people wrong this season. He's been so consistent all year. Give the Spaniard a car that's capable of competing at the front on a regular basis and you can all but guarantee that he'll be up there getting the absolute maximum from his car. For Alonso, he has dropped down on this list. But like with Ocon, it's more from other drivers upping their performances rather than Alonso dropping back. The highlight of Alonso's season was obviously that well-earned podium in Qatar, and he did remarkably well to manage the tyres to make the one-stop work there. But it was really a year of consistent results, with 15 points finishes across the season, and performances that massively helped the Alpine team beat the Alpha Tauri setup to 5th in the Constructors' Championship. Number 9, George Russell, down 1. Another driver that has dropped down on this list next, and again, it's definitely not for lack of good performances from George Russell. The second half of the year started with that unbelievable second place finish in Belgium, which was, of course, really just a good qualifying result in the wet conditions with that farcical race. Regardless, it was a podium for Russell and a huge haul of points for him and the Williams team. It was a reward for what has been an excellent 2021 season on the whole for George Russell, with four Q3 appearances across the season in what was probably the ninth fastest car over the year. I have to say, it's been impressive to watch him extract the maximum from his car. If I was to critique Russell's season in particular, it would have to be the fact that he did appear to drop off right at the end. He was outqualified by Latifi on a couple of occasions, including the last round in Abu Dhabi, and so his bulletproof record in the Williams qualifying was indeed lost but I still expect him to be up there competing with Lewis Hamilton in the same machinery next year as we move into this new era with Russell at the Mercedes team. Number 8, Valtteri Bottas, up 4. And talking of the Mercedes team, it's Valtteri Bottas that's the big mover on this list to get up to 8th in the standings. The Finnish driver has undoubtedly seen an uptick in form in the second half of the season, with excellent performances in Monza, Turkey and Sao Paulo. And this is despite the fact that he was forced into taking more and more power units as the Mercedes team identified the best course of action for Lewis Hamilton in terms of managing the grid drops that the championship challenger would face. I'm so pleased that Bottas was able to get that one final victory in Turkey as he dominated that race, where the Mercedes car was definitely the best. 
It may be his last victory in the sport, as he goes to Alfa Romeo next season. But in the second half of the year, as a whole, Bottas has definitely upped his performances and has been there competing at the front more often than his occasional disappointing results. And there were a few of those, including Russia before the rain fell, the race in Mexico City where he was spun out at the start, and of course the final race in Abu Dhabi where he dropped backwards early on. But on the whole, he was there more often than not to support Hamilton in his title challenge in the second half of the year. So 8th for Bottas on a season where he's done well on the whole and his performances were crucial in the Constructors' Championship victory for Mercedes. But for me, I think that the team have made the right decision to make the change and invest in their long-term future with George Russell. Number 7, Sergio Perez, up 2. Sergio Perez next, and I think he's done an excellent job this season, especially considering it was his first in that dreaded Red Bull second seat. His performances, like Bottas's, did improve in the second half of the year, as he was able to extract more from the Red Bull car after he put some time into studying the way that Verstappen was driving the same car. Given his experience in the sport, I'm not surprised that he improved with three podiums in a row between Turkey and Mexico, and multiple other races where he was definitely in the mix more often than not. And you can't deny that his defensive driving at the last round in Abu Dhabi was just an absolute masterclass, with Perez leaning on one of his strengths, which is his supreme tyre management, as he made the most of the soft tyres and extended the first stint, dropping Hamilton back into Verstappen using some class defensive moves. And yes, that didn't necessarily help Verstappen win the championship, but he did everything that he could to help him and the team. The challenge for Perez this season has mostly been related to his qualifying performances and the fact that he often finds himself out of position and unable to support in the first stint of the race. For him to improve and become the second driver that the team desperately needs, he will want to improve that part of his driving. But that being said, it's been a good year for Perez, especially considering it was his first year racing a Red Bull car, which is definitely designed for Verstappen's driving style. Hence, he sits seventh on this list. Number six, Pierre Gasly, down two. And another brilliant season was had by Pierre Gasly, who scored over 100 points in a season for the first time in his career with 110. And I feel so harsh dropping him two spots when compared to mid-season. But the Ferrari drivers have just been so good in the latter stages of this year. Gasly has well and truly delivered this season, being the major point scorer for that Alpha Tauri team. He's really come into his own this year with an impressive 18 Q3 appearances across the season. He's certainly got the most out of his car given it was so strong over one lap pace, but tended to struggle in the races given he often found himself out of position. But whenever there was a circuit that it was tough to overtake, it could be so often Gasly picking up that best of the rest spot, such as his 4th place finishes in Mexico and the Netherlands, as well as the 5th place finish in Hungary. It was an excellent season where he proved himself to be a top tier driver. I really hope he does continue on this trajectory, as if he continues to deliver performances like he has this season, then I have no doubt that a top team will be looking to bring him in within the next few years. There is that doubt that remains about how he will respond to pressure in a top team, but Gasly is a far better driver than the one that left Red Bull halfway through the 2019 season. The only question I would have is whether Red Bull will be happy keeping Gasly at the Alpha Tauri team, but with performances like this year, they'd be fools to get rid of him. Before I get into the top 5, I want to take a moment to ask you to consider subscribing to Behind the Drive. There's loads more postseason content to come, and of course, there's lots of preseason content as well as we look forward to this new era. Thanks. Number 5, Charles Leclerc, non-mover. Charles Leclerc is in 5th which is in the same position as his mid-season ranking, and this season has been another brilliant one for the Monegas driver. He could have comfortably had 5th or maybe even 4th in the driver's standings when you consider his non-start at Monaco, plus the retirements in Hungary, where Lance Stroll took him out of the race at the start. But disappointing races in France, where he suffered with severe tyre degradation, and in Russia, where he didn't capitalise once the rain began to fall, with the team prioritising Carlos Sainz instead. But whenever Leclerc has finished the races, he's been so consistent with his results, with seven fourth place or better finishes, and this has allowed him to take a huge haul of 159 points across the season, which meant he ended up just behind Norris and Sainz in the driver's standings. Leclerc has had the lion's share of the bad luck of those two Ferrari drivers this season, and he's had a brilliant season on the whole, hence he sits fifth on this list. And he's such a talented driver. 
I can't wait to watch him compete at the front once Ferrari's able to provide him with a great car. The question you have to ask though is whether he and Sainz will work well together in a championship fight given they're so often on the same section of track. Number 4, Carlos Sainz, up 2. Carlos Sainz is 4th on this list and after a fantastic first season with Ferrari, the Spaniard got a great opportunity to move to the Italian team this year and he needed to impress given he was replacing Sebastian Vettel. He was in a position where he would be the number 2 who would be at risk should a driver like Mick Schumacher, Callum Eilat or Robert Schwartzman prove themselves ready for a drive in that Ferrari car. But seasons like this one for Carlos Sainz will definitely cement his position at the Ferrari team. He beat Charles Leclerc over the course of the season and he even scored more podium finishes than his Monegas teammate as he got 4 trophies across the year. The Ferrari team now certainly have a driver lineup that's capable of helping them win a championship, and they could well be in the best position to produce a title winning car for these new regulations, given Mercedes and Red Bull have been locked in a championship battle all year. Sainz's season has seen him finish in the points on 20 occasions from 22 races. That level of consistency is excellent to see, and his two non-points finishes were both 11th place results, meaning he's had no retirements across the whole year. An excellent result and season for the Spaniard. Number 3, Lando Norris, down 1. Lando Norris next, and yes, he's dropped one position on his mid year ranking. For me, though, Norris has still had an exceptional season. He got out of the blocks quickly and has really had a breakout year. He went off the boil slightly after Monza, but when you actually look at his results, he could have easily got the win around Sochi, he could have easily had a better result in Brazil without a clash with his old teammate, and he could have been far higher up the order in Qatar if it wasn't for that puncher. And then of course the Abu Dhabi race where he started from third and it just got away from him with another slow puncture. So a number of results went against him in the second half of the year, but it didn't help that a new upgraded Ferrari power unit and upticks in form of Bottas and Perez left him in a more competitive environment. But for me, he's been the third best driver when you look at this season as a whole. He's even scored four podiums across the season, with a career best second place in Monza. And even when this season dropped off towards the end, he still scored points in every one of those races. An impressive year and a marker laid down when it comes to his teammate partnership with Daniel Ricciardo. Number 2, Lewis Hamilton, up 1. The penultimate driver on this list is Lewis Hamilton, who is one place up on his mid-year ranking. Lewis made a number of mistakes across the season, particularly early on with the driver ending up in the gravel at Imola, the brake magic mistake in Azerbaijan and that disappointing showing in Monaco where he was just nowhere compared to Bottas. But Lewis Hamilton is a driver that can and will fight for a championship right down to the wire, and despite looking out of contention after Mexico, we have perhaps seen Hamilton fight harder for this title than any of his others. There was the result in Brazil where he was disqualified from qualifying to come back storming through the field with a fresh combustion engine, to then a dominant display in Qatar, a hard fought but controversial outcome in Saudi Arabia, and all of these combined to mean he came into the final race of the season level on points with his rival. It was awesome to watch Hamilton come out fighting, making sure that we had a championship decider in Abu Dhabi. And quite frankly, he deserved the win in Abu Dhabi, with both him and the team not really putting a foot wrong in the race, and making the right decisions when it came to strategy. But ultimately, he got unlucky with that final safety car, as he was a sitting duck compared to Verstappen on the fresh soft tyres at the end. Overall, Hamilton's performances this season alongside Verstappen's have been some of the best we've ever witnessed and to be honest they're up there in a league of their own after this year. Number 1 Max Verstappen non-mover And finally it's Max Verstappen who stays at the top of this ranking whenever he's finished with his car intact he's been first or second at each and every race. He's made fewer mistakes than Lewis over the course of the season, but has been responsible for more incidents across the year with his aggressive on-track approach. For me, he's overstepped the mark on a couple of occasions, but you can't deny his pace this season. And in terms of laps led over the year and pole positions, he's been the dominant driver. Verstappen ends the year as a deserving champion, and it took him a bit of luck in the end to ensure he had the opportunity to overtake Hamilton on the final lap of the race in Abu Dhabi to ensure he came home as the world champion. Verstappen is still near the beginning of his career, and if Red Bull find themselves on top in the new regulations, it will be difficult to stop Verstappen given he has a team around him that are hungry to win.
This season has been one of the very best, and it's been Verstappen and Hamilton that have made it so good to watch this year. So those are my rankings. Let me know in the comments who you agree with and who you disagree with, but try to make sure to be civil about it in the discussion. And if you enjoyed the video and watched all the way to the end, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more postseason content to come very soon.